Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, it's Bart from multirotorforums.com. Today we're talking about our 250 size FPV quad racer. And uh, we're doing a build thread at the website covering uh, this class of racer, which is the spec class. They call it a spec class because uh, in order to race in that category, you have to build the helicopter according to the specifications. And what that does is it makes it uh, more affordable. It also makes it more fair for new racers that are coming in that haven't figured out all the tricks yet. They can just build a simple quad, um, get out there and race with it, have it be competitive. It's more based on flying abilities than it is building. So we're building one of these, and this might be your first build. Uh, it could be something uh, that you're doing just for a change of pace after having built a bunch of other helicopters. Regardless, we're doing a build at the website, and uh, we're using this frame, it's an Expert 250 from iFlight. Uh, we have iFlight 1806 uh, motors, which are 2300 kV, and uh, that is a very common motor size for this class of racer. Most of the different spec classes revolve around this size. There's a little bit of variation in the motors, the batteries, the props, those kinds of things. Um, but chances are, if you build one of these, you'll be able to take it out and race it in most of the events that you might find. So. With this iFlight Expert 250 frame and the iFlight motors, uh, this was all purchased at GodHellyRC.com, uh, by the way. Uh, we're also using 5-inch propellers, which are also part of the spec class in most of the racing leagues that you'll find online. Uh, we're using 10-amp ESCs. I've seen other people use 12s, but 10-amps uh, do appear to be perfectly adequate for the motors and the voltages that we're running. Uh, one of the things we're going to have to figure out as we go uh, you'll see a lot of these builds where they just take the ESC and they plop it right down on the arm. Maybe a little bit of hot glue and a zip tie to hold it in place. Uh, there's a lot of room in this frame in front and in back of uh, the flight controller. And there's enough room where if you take the two ESCs and put them front to back, they could actually go in there and be protected from crashes. Not saying I'm going to crash, but it's possible. I suppose somebody else might. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ESCs inside the frame like that, run the wires into there. I'll put a little bit of uh, kind of a medium density foam underneath the ESCs just to protect them from the frame material. And uh, another thing that needs to be figured out as you're building this is where you're going to put your battery. This is a three cell 1300 milliamp pack and this is about what you'd want to use when you're actually racing. Uh, you could put as much as an 1800 milliamp. 3S pack on here. You could probably go to a 22 if you wanted to, but it's going to make the frame perform a lot differently than it would with this smaller pack. Um, but this fits right in the center of the frame here. You could put it underneath if you wanted to, but then you run the risk of damaging it if it's not protected somehow. Uh, there isn't quite enough room inside the frame for the battery to go along with the wires. So I think what the plan for this frame is going to be to put that battery right in the center there with a, a Velcro strap around it. And then with the ESCs in the frame, like I showed you, uh, I'll probably make a wiring harness to take the power from the battery from these two wires and distribute it to the four sets of power wires on the ESCs. And then I'll also put 3S power directly into this open pilot board. And um, power for the video transmitter and the camera will I have to look at the specs on this camera, but uh, chances are I'll be able to pull power from the BEC that's built into the ESC. So when it comes to power distribution, that's something a lot of people get hung up on. They don't know if they should go with a power distribution board, which is a little board where you run the power and then you pull your ESC power from uh, pads on the board, or uh, maybe a wiring harness. I like to make a wiring harness, so I'll probably go in that direction, and I'll do the details, or I'll show the details of that in the build thread. Um, at the website. So battery placement is going to go up on top. I'll use a wiring harness for power distribution. I'm going to put the ESCs inside the frame. These are all little decisions you make as you're building stuff. Um, as far as this camera goes, I picked this up at eFest and it's a Spectrum VA11 or VA1100 uh, FPV camera with a built-in 5.8 gigahertz transmitter. It's very nice in that it's small and light. Uh, it's much lighter than an individual camera with an ind individual transmitter, um, but it is small. It uh, looks to be relatively fragile. 
Uh, and from what I understand, with the right receiver antennas, you can get maybe five to six hundred feet of range with it, which is more than enough for uh, your typical closed FPV course or you know spec FPV course. Uh, one of the problems with the antenna being mounted on the camera like this, rather than in some other location that's better for transmission, um, is that when this is mounted in its position on the front of the frame, on top of these little vibration dampers, uh, if you've flown these before, you know in order to make it move forward, it has to pitch forward and then it zooms away. So when that happens, with the antenna being down at the bottom and this frame being up behind it like that, it's going to block out uh, the video signal if you happen to be standing behind it. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to turn around the frame, I'm going to make the, the pads the back part of the frame, so it's actually going to fly this way now, and I'm going to put the camera, that was my lens cover, I'm going to put the camera in the back, and I'm going to tilt it up a little bit, I'm going to mount it high enough to look out over the battery, okay, so there's the battery, the camera's going to be back here like this, it'll be tilted up just a little bit, maybe 10 or 15 degrees, and that way, when the helicopter pitches forward, the camera's up at the top, and most importantly, this antenna for the video signal is up clear of the rest of the frame, so I'll be able to get signal no matter where I am on the course. All right, now, with it being exposed like that up at the top, if I were to crash and roll this over, which I'm sure I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna probably have to build some sort of a, a roll bar around the top of the frame so that when this does crash, it doesn't uh, destroy my little camera and transmitter, okay? And then the front of the frame is wide open, so I could probably put a GoPro camera there at some point uh, you know, when I want to start filming uh, runs around a course or practice. Okay, so those are some of the decisions you have to make when you get the frame, you start assembling it, um, where these components go, how you're going to connect them together, how you're going to accommodate different things like this video transmitter needing to have, you know, a clear area around it. Because 5.8 gigahertz, if it were down here, uh, if, it, if the frame if I were to use the frame the way it's supposed to be used, put the camera down here and then tilt up, 5.8 gigahertz won't uh, transmit through things very well. So as that frame pitches up and, and gets in between my receiver antenna and the transmitter antenna, it's going to block the signal. And uh, also carbon fiber is not very good for uh, transmiss transmissivity. <laughs> um, but yeah, the carbon fiber will block signals, uh, whether it's, you know, like a radio signal, uh, the satellites on your JR Spectrum receivers, uh, that signal doesn't go through carbon fiber either. So knowing how these different things interact helps you to do your layout. So when you're doing your build, you put things together the right way the first time, then when you go out to fly, everything works the way you expect it to. We'll do a separate report on our FPV uh, camera and transmitter combination from Spectrum. And uh, once we get it flying, we'll do another video just to talk about strategies for getting around the course. I will tell you this, uh, it's not gonna be the frame and the motors that help you get around the course quickly. It's going to be your flying skills. So if you're just starting out with this, uh, don't commiserate over every little detail. Get yourself flying. Uh, I would even say buy the cheapest stuff you could find. Get one or two of them flying and then get out there and just spend a lot of time maneuvering around uh, poles, obstacles, whatever it takes, because it's going to be your ability to come up on a, on a marker on a race course and get around it quickly and then be on your way to the next marker on the course. That's what's going to get you around the course quickly. Having the optimum setup of motors and ESCs and frames if you're in the spec class is not going to make you as fast as being able to get around the course quickly. So uh, I chose to buy the kit from gotheliRC.com. It's the iFlight frame with the iFlight motors. The ESCs are included, the props are included, the flight control board is included, the Open Pilot CC3 uh, D board. And my strategy was to just buy something that was available where all the hard choices were made and just get it flying so I could start practicing. Once I have this flying, once I'm good with it, I'll start thinking about a faster. Uh, 250 size spec racer. I have a couple of ideas for a frame of my own, but by all means, if this is what you want to do, pick the parts, get building, and then fly, 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 because that's going to make you fast. All right, 
So thank you very much for watching. You can see the whole build thread at multirotorforums.com. We're happy to answer whatever questions you might have. And if you have suggestions or something you'd like to see in the next video, something that you might like to see explained more clearly, by all means post to the thread and we'll take care of that for you. Thank you.